Hi folks, so in my last video I calibrated, among other things, um, this model 2020B, uh, 0 to 20 volts, 0 to 2 amp precision uh, DC power supply from Power Designs. Um, and I thought I'd do a little teardown of this thing, uh, and a little bit of theory of operation, just very basic, um, because uh, this video by Dave Jones, EEV blog, um, he covers a very similar um, voltage reference uh, to this power designs and he does a much better job of explaining how it works um, and of course he's a real electrical engineer I'm just a hobbyist so if you're interested in how these sorts of power supplies work you should definitely check out uh, well his channel in, in general but uh, especially this movie uh, as you might imagine uh, <laughs> due to the lower number of digits in this one and this one um, this device is a lot simpler uh, his device has um, a, a chopper amplifier um, which you can hear about in the video um, to basically remove all the DC offset whereas this one does not you have to actually manually zero it um, and uh, his uh, voltage, or sorry, resistors are much uh, higher precision than this one. But anyways, the theory of operation is pretty much identical. All right, so for a quick overview, um, this thing was manufactured no earlier than 1987. That is the most recent date code that I found on this thing. Uh, but basically, it is a glorified uh, 7805 or uh, LM317. Uh, you've got your... Uh, transformer here providing an unregulated source. You've got a bunch of uh, pass resistors here that basically connect your unregulated source, after some filtering of course, to the output. And then you've got some control circuitry to control the base current of the transistors to provide the uh, appropriate voltage. Um, and the control circuitry does other fancy things like provide current limiting and things like that and uh, do um, feedback from the output to control the noise and various cool things like that but at its base it is basically a glorified LM317 so if you've ever built a variable power supply uh, using an LM317 you know that you can change the output of this regulator uh, by changing a feedback resistor. So this little trim pot right here is providing that functionality in this little quick breadboard power supply. So obviously for a power supply like this moving a little trim pot around and around isn't really ideal uh, for both accuracy and just simple convenience. So uh, power supplies like this use a so-called Kelvin arrangement of resistors and it's very simple. Basically, let's get some terminology down first. Each one of these knobs is what is called a decade. So, you know, this is the one decade, this is the tenths, this is the hundredths, this is a thousandth. So there's four decades in this uh, knob arrangement here. And what each decade does is selects a uh, number of these precision resistors to be uh, in series. So basically each decade selects a resistance value for itself. Then all of the decades are connected in series so you get a final overall resistance for all the uh, decades in series and then that resistance is inserted into the feedback loop um, of the LM317 equivalent. So instead of this thing you've got all of these switches in series that select a pattern of these resistors to be in series. So if these resistors are accurate enough you get a very accurate resistance um, going out of this thing. Now of course uh, if you want to get really really accurate you can use a so-called Kelvin Varley uh, arrangement um, but that's much more complicated and for an instrument uh, such as this you don't really need that kind of precision. If you wanted to have you know, many more digits 
uh, and or use cheaper uh, resistors or you know things like that then you'd want to use such a, something like that but for this just a regular old Kelvin arrangement is more than sufficient now back to a little uh, aside um, about resistor networks uh, let's continue looking here here we just have a filtering capacitor another filtering cap over here you have an output capacitor that's connected to these terminals here and uh, nothing much uh, of note other than the uh, zeroing um, potentiometer here and the calibration pot which if you watched my uh, previous video on this supply you will know that uh, this device came without a calibration pot that's right someone had desoldered the pot for their own nefarious purposes so I had to put in uh, my own little pot there uh, that was the only one that I had that uh, matched the uh, spec but it's definitely not a uh, trimmer that's for sure but uh, it works enough for now and I can't actually calibrate it any closer to uh, perfect with the equipment that I have which is basically that multimeter down there not the pinnacle of uh, accuracy that so classic old-school construction everything is through hole uh, we're fortunate to have the silk screen and uh, yeah, let's uh, dive right in. Well, let's start right at the beating heart of this thing. This is an LM399 precision voltage reference. Now, the uh, LM317 that I keep referring to also has a built-in voltage reference. However, this one is way more accurate. Uh, it is a Zener diode internally that also has a automatic uh, temperature controller inside so this package will always be uh, very close to the same uh, temperature whenever this thing is running uh, and this is very good because it eliminates um, most issues with you know ambient temperature around this thing and here you can see a little sample application uh, from the data sheet see here's the device with the automatic heater there and then the uh, Zener supply or sorry the Zener diode there um, and actually uh, this circuit here is very similar uh, in essence to what this power supply you know over here is doing um, except without a lot of the um, uh, variable gain that this thing will have and you know a lot of the feedback and lower noise stuff but uh, basically this is what you get when one of these power supplies and predictably, just behind the voltage reference, there is an LM358H, uh, you know, op-amp. And our old friend, the NE555 timer. What this is doing, I think, um, I'll have to check the schematic for sure, but when this thing is in overload, it blinks these lights here, so I'm pretty sure uh, <laughs> that that's what that thing is doing. And yeah, a quick glance at the schematic. Here's the 555, and there's the little lights. Apart from that, not too much interesting. There's a bunch of transistors here in the old school cases. Uh, there's another one, there's another one. Um, what else? A bunch of, you know, big power diodes. Um, we've got a fuse, a bunch of uh, precision uh, resistors here, wire wound. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've got a couple of trim pots. I think this one controls the... Um, what is this control? I just adjusted it. That's not zero. Oh, that's a maximum current limit. This little pot here adjusts your current limit, but when I got this thing, it actually allowed you to pull almost three amps out of this thing, so I adjusted that down. Uh, this adjusts like the uh, the calibration of this front meter in amps mode. No idea what this does. Calibration uh, procedure didn't talk about it. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so here's the schematic for this beast. Uh, so you've got your output over here, you've got your transformer over here, it's scrolled off but it's there, and you've got your pass transistors, you know, these guys over here. Now this op amp right here is the heart and soul. So you may remember in the um, LM399 data sheet, you saw the example of the buffered uh, voltage reference um, with the op amp pointing, you know, that way. Well, this is the same op amp essentially, with a whole bunch of other stuff to control it. But that's pretty much what you're getting. 
uh, if you follow the output here, you'll notice that it hits the base of Q3 over here. And if you follow Q3, it basically ties into all of this and provides uh, a base current for these uh, these things. So that's the, the genesis of the control. Um, and then the rest is just, you know, gravy. So you got your voltage reference uh, over here that ties into here and provides some feedback. Uh, you've got a capacitor around here somewhere that, you know, improves the uh, noise response of this thing. This one's interesting. This is the current limit amplifier. So basically it's hooked into a bunch of things, but essentially you got your output here. Uh, when it's low, you'll notice that it essentially shorts out uh, the base of this Q3 that was being driven by this. And when that happens, uh, the uh, drive current, uh, the, gate, uh, the gate current of these pass transistors gets uh, reduced until, you know, this thing uh, stops trying to uh, pull down the, the base of this uh, transistor here. So that uh, in turn lowers the current through these things, which means that, you know, the current is limited. Uh, if you again look at Dave Jones' uh, power supply design videos, he talks all about this and his little power supply does exactly this. There's an op amp that pulls down the uh, base current of his uh, linear pass transistors. Very simple. And that's pretty much all, all that's going on around here. Uh, here's the uh, overload flashing circuit. So you can see, you know, there's, it's tied into here, and this probably turns on this 555, which links the lights. Uh, over here, you've got, you know, voltage reference amplifier. All very interesting stuff if you want to uh, get the schematic and, and read all about it, but I'm not going to go into it here. Um, probably also because I'll make a mistake somewhere and look like an idiot. <laughs> That's always fun. But, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that was at least interesting. Um, I'll post up a link to this schematic in case you want to check it out. And, uh, yeah. This thing is older than I am, but it definitely works better than me. That's for sure. Thanks for watching. See you next time.